Buggity, buggity, get up off your feet! Hey, hello everybody! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, it's the DW Show for 2012. Very first one. It's 2012. Now the reason I say it is because I had my old crew chief, Jake Elder. Bill Elliott is qualifying at Daytona, I think it was, and everybody said, how fast do you think he'll run, Jake? And Jake said, I guarantee you, Bill Elliott's going to run 2010 today. And so most of us guys have been around for a while when it's, you know, like 20 whatever. We always think about my old buddy, Jake Elder, whom, by the way, uh, I probably wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. And the induction is next week, by the way. So next Friday night, uh, it'll be taped, replayed on speed on Sunday. So... Uh, you might want to check your local listings, but getting inducted into the Hall of Fame next week, what a great way to start this year off for me. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm very humbled by the whole experience. I know, I know. DW humbled? <laughs> I really am. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the pinnacle. Climbed a lot of mountains, uh, but uh, this is the last one. Once you get to the top of this mountain, you've, you've made it. There's no other mountains to climb. And so, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the ceremony. A great group of guys I'm going in with, and uh, it should be a fun time. It's during the NASCAR preview over in Charlotte. Uh, a lot of folks are going to be in town, a lot of media. The media tour will be going on. So it should be a big, a big event, and um, I'm, I'm really anxious to, to be a part of it and, and, and get a new ring and get a new jacket and put the old Tide car on display. That's going to be my car. Uh, that's going to be on my in my display there in the hall. So I'm very very uh, very excited about all that. But here's some things I'm ex I'm personally excited about that. Here's some things I'm a little concerned about. Uh, there's a lot of changes being made to the race cars for 2012 uh, for Daytona. You know, a lot of people don't like the two car draft. A lot of people don't like this what they call pod racing. Uh, two guys working together and and. I, I kind of, I'm on the fence. Some parts of it I like, some parts of it I don't. Uh, some parts of it I like, you know, I, I, I'm fascinated when I see two cars come from nowhere, pushing each other right past everybody, right out into the lead. And I'm sitting there saying, how in the heck can that happen? But it, 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 it's amazing. I mean, you're talking about sometimes 10, 15 miles an hour faster than the other guys are all running around the bottom of the racetrack. So that part of it fascinates me. And the other thing I tell you that I like about it, it gives a lot of people an opportunity to run up front. Uh, you think about Dave Blaney at Talladega or Robbie Gordon or any number of guys that you would normally not think about being uh, someone that could possibly win a race at Daytona or Talladega. Trevor Bain, would you have picked Trevor Bain to win the Daytona 500? He and Ricky Stenhouse at the end of the day were the two guys that were sitting there looking at a chance of winning the 500 and, and, and Trevor wins it, I, I think it's because of the two-car draft. Now, there's some downsides to it. NASCAR says they took a poll, and uh, that, that ma across the board, the majority of the fans said they hated it. But they took the poll right after the race. You take any kind of poll right after a race, and you ask race fans, what do you think about the race today? Well, if your guy didn't do good, uh, you're not going to be happy. You're going to say, I hate this kind of racing. I hate restrictor plate racing. I hear it all the time. So to take a poll right after a race might not have been a good idea. I've been listening to Sirius Radio. I've been on the Internet. I, I read all the blogs. I, I, I honestly believe it's 50-50 at, 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 at worst. Half the people seem to be okay with it. The other half are not sure. Uh, some are like me. They like some parts of it. So... I'm concerned, and here's why I'm concerned. Let me tell you what NASCAR is going to do. Do you think YouTube, okay, Twitter, Facebook, social media, folks, you have the loudest voice you've ever had in the history of this sport. When you speak in the past, who did you, who did you speak to? Your buddies, each other. You didn't have anybody out there listening to you. Today, when you speak on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or any other form of social media, NASCAR has a, they got a squad of people that all they do is sit there and watch and read what's going on. When the name NASCAR pops up, big red flag pops up. 
Whoa, what is somebody saying about NASCAR? So you have the strongest voice you've ever heard, ever had, and NASCAR's reacting to it. And I give them credit for that. I like that. I react to it. Here's the thing. Don't overreact. No, <clears throat> let's don't have a knee-jerk reaction here, okay? Here's some things you're doing to the cars for Daytona, for the Daytona 500, the most watched race of the year. More eyeballs on the Daytona 500 than all the other races put together, just about. That concerns me, but here's why. They're going to change the size of the radiator. Now, granted, these guys have had radiators. Their radiators are bigger than their fuel cells. There's something wrong with that. They've had radiators that hold five gallons. I don't know how many, five gallons of water. I'll just use that number, and that may be too small. But NASCAR is going to restrict that down to only a two-gallon radiator. That's going to be a pretty small little radiator. Okay, so guys said, okay, we got a big radiator, got these big expansion tanks where you put the water in the radiator. Those things were getting the size of fruit jars. I mean, uh, uh, gallon buckets sitting there with a, a reservoir for uh, overflow. So NASCAR is going to restrict that down to, uh, uh, to a smaller size. And they're going to move the, the, radio, the grill opening. They're going to move that around so that the opening is not quite as big and not quite as effective. Take less air. So already you see smaller radiator, smaller overflow. They're going to restrict the pop-off valve on the, on the uh, cooling system. The thing's going to pop off a lot quicker, which means you can't run the engine near as hot. So that's going to be a change. Uh, that's not enough. That's all, on the, that's all on the cooling side. And then we're going to have fuel injection. This is the first time these guys have been at the track when everybody's got fuel injection. No more carburetors. Everybody's got fuel injection. It's all going to be computer generated. You'll time the engine, you'll tune the engine, everything with a laptop. No more time and light, no more looking at spark plugs, no more jets. It's all going to be done on computer. I don't know about you, I struggle with my computer. Sometimes we don't seem to be on the same page. I'm not saying the page isn't in there, we're just not on the same page. So that concerns me. And then you got fuel injection on the engine. Huge change to that motor. Huge. NASCAR says, okay, we're going to shorten the rear spoiler. That takes away downforce. When you take the spoiler and you lower that rear spoiler, you're loosening the back of that car up. You're, giving, you're taking air off the rear spoiler. Another thing they're going to do, which is totally opposite of what you should do, they're going to soften the rear springs. Now, you say softer rear springs, more traction. Wrong. When you're at Daytona and Talladega, if you shorten the spoiler, you need to stiffen the rear springs because you don't want the rear of the car to go down. You want to maximize every how much spoiler is back there. Back in the day, we ran 750-pound springs in the rear of the car with the spoiler laying down at 5 degrees because we didn't want the rear of the car to move. We wanted to hold it at its exact position. Now when you soften those rear springs, shorten that rear spoiler, the back of the car is going to go down even more. This thing is going to be evil. That's all I can tell you. It's going to be so hard to drive. Hey, that's what they want. They want these things to be hard to drive so when the driver gets to the corner, he goes, ah, he's got to back off. That's the thinking. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's reverse engineering at its finest. I just don't see how it's going to work. But there's a lot of grip. And that's what they're relying on, all the grip we have at Daytona. Last year, tires, new surface, a lot of grip. This year, maybe not so much. So, got a spring change, spoiler change, radiator change, carburetor to fuel injection change. Lots of things that they're throwing at these guys. I call this test, we're going down there for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I call this test the kitchen sink test. Because folks, when they leave there, they will have thrown everything at it, including the kitchen sink. So, we're off to a flying start, 2012. 2012 uh, is something to behold. I didn't even mention combinations of drivers, crew chiefs, drivers in new cars, crew chiefs changes, organization changes. Uh, just, this is the most changes I think I've ever seen across the board in any one given year in a long, long time. Uh, I, I hope that it isn't going overboard. I hope we haven't, I hope we don't get lost. A lot of times I've changed so many things on the car I couldn't find my way back. That's one good thing though. I will say this, in everybody's defense, that's why we're testing. If some of these things turn out to be a disaster, we do have time to fix it before we get down there for the race. 
Daytona has always been a crapshoot. Ever since I've been going to Daytona, you show up down there and there's always some unexpected thing happens. I think, based on what we're looking at right now, <laughs> there could be a lot of unexpected things happen. That's why you're going to tune in. I'm going to be there. I'm going to call it like I see it. And I'm going to let you see what I call. You know what I always say? What I love about television? It's a picture and a thousand words.